Hello there, my name's Martin Crompton and this is my completely spoiler free review for the new Star Wars film The Last Jedi. Um, firstly I'm sorry I haven't done a review in quite a while but I've been you know just really really just so busy recently with all my social events and um, oh you know what it's like just <sighs> Uh, anyway, yes, um, The Last Jedi, it's um, it's the new Star Wars film, it's pretty good, you should see it, uh, it should be at a cinema near you, it's the sort of film that will be, be at most places I should think. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's obviously the sequel to The Force Awakens, which was the the one that brought Star Wars back a few years ago now. Um, and yeah, it was a big, big deal. A lot of people were very excited. I was pretty excited myself. Um, you know, there's a lot of debate since. Did it live up to expectations? Was it, was it disappointing? Was it worth bringing it back? And and all that. Ultimately, I'd say it it was good. I liked it. I think it was worth worth bringing it back. Um, but you know, insane amount of of pressure. Um, you know, bringing it back because it was so, so popular and so beloved. Um, you know, so going back to the start, Star Wars obviously began all the way back in 1999 with Episode One, The Phantom Menace. That's where it all started with you know George Lucas, you know this young guy. Um, I think he was fresh out of high school at the time. He, you know big idea, gonna make this Star Wars thing. Um, and yeah, it just just blew up, it was huge, really popular. And then obviously there was, it was a trilogy, a few years later there's episode two, Attack of the Clones, and then episode three, Revenge of the Sith. And then, you know, no Star Wars films for a little while. Um, and then Disney bought the rights to Star Wars. Um, and then they announced that they were going to do another one, except they said that it would be episode seven, which was weird because the last one was episode three. So they were going to skip episodes four, five, and six, which was strange. But you know, it's it's Disney, and they seem to know what they're doing with this sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of fans were a bit a bit confused, a bit skeptical, um, especially when they said that they wouldn't be bringing back any of the sort of any of the beloved characters from from the original trilogy and I think a lot of fans straight away were skeptical um, from the fact that Jake Lloyd wouldn't be coming back he was obviously the fan favorite um, he played young Anakin of course in the um, Phantom Menace and the other characters like Jar Jar Binks and and Watto wouldn't be coming back. They were fan favourites. Um, not even Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, you know he was another mainstay of the of the Star Wars saga. To be honest, lots of other beloved characters as well that wouldn't be coming back. Um, Oscar Schindler, Belcho, Plum, Flibble, Quim, Tucker. Chris R, Chairman Mao, Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom and war, Neil Breen, Sludgy, Hootie McToot, Grumple, Fudgy, you know, none of those guys, none of those guys coming back for the original trilogy. You, you know, they would be all new characters basically, so we're a bit like, ah, what's, who are these new people? Um, but, you know, it was still Star Wars. One thing that myself and a lot of other people weren't weren't particularly sure of with The Force Awakens was how they they used a lot of real locations, were you know, were real places actually outside in the real world because it sort of broke that the broke the tradition that George Lucas had on the original Star Wars trilogy of you know doing it all green screen, which was part of it was just part of what Star Wars was. It was just the the tradition, and 
<clears throat> he sort of pioneered it, really. Um, cause he famously filmed the whole of the original trilogy against a green screen background in his garage. <clears throat> and, you know, he would, he would come downstairs in the morning in his dressing gown with a mug of coffee. And um, that's how they went about business. And he would say, you know, he'd come down and he'd say, come on, guys, let's get this crap in the can by lunch. Then we're off down the boozer. And that's how he would um, talk to the actors, how he would inspire them and and get them, you know, G'd up, ready for the day's work. Um, got some other quotes by him here. Uh, Don't worry about it, they'll fix it in post, in it. Um, uh, I think sometimes he could be quite demanding, quite a little bit nasty to the actors. You know, he could be quite quite tough at times. Here's, here's one. Um, get it right or I'll be fetching a blade. I'm not afraid to nick a bitch with a blade, you hear? Bit, a bit nasty there, but sometimes he could be nice. Sometimes he'd be, you know, Mr. Nice Guy, very approachable, and he'd say things like, Come on, let's all gather round and tickle my tummy. I'm like a big beardy baby, aren't I? Yumma, yumma, yummy, yum, yum, bum. And, you know, you can really imagine them, imagine them doing that. <laughs> Uh, lovely. And I thought that I I liked the Force Awakens. I thought it was pretty good. Um, you know, it's a bit difficult to get your head around all the new the new characters on the scene. Um, you know, the sort of the the, the kind of main new character was Rey, uh, villain Kylo Ren. There was this quite surprising bit where Kylo Ren killed um, his dad. Uh, it was called Han Solo. It's like it was quite surprising, but it wasn't really like it wasn't really like it didn't have any emotional relevance because Han obviously wasn't a character from the original trilogy, so I didn't really have any prior connection to him. He wasn't like a, a kind of um, you know important figure from my childhood or anything like that. So watching that happen, it wasn't like watching a part of my childhood get get killed right in front of me or anything like that so uh, when I watched it I was just like yeah you know who cares um, well, it's, you know it's kind of sad but it wasn't like it wasn't like mm, you know it, yeah, get over it um, and then all this crazy stuff happens in The Force Awakens and then what it all builds to is um, Ray at the end finally gets to this island she's walks up the hill and she meets this bloke he's not from the original trilogy so we don't know who he is but he's sort of like a he's like a sort of hairy like a hairy biker sort of look and he's all dressed like he's off to do his taekwondo practice um Oh, and Ray's, Ray's got another mate as well called Chewbacca, and he's like he's like a really hairy biker. He's like he's like the hairiest biker. <coughs> um, yes, yeah, so that was all from the Force Awakens. It's good. Onto new stuff now, and it's a new vibe, new new styles. You know, the vibes already been changed up massively, obviously because. George Lucas now isn't involved anymore and he was so you know everything he did on the original trilogy was so well received and so popular and he really knew you know at the end of the day let's face it these are these, these are kids films you know they're for kids really for the even if you're an adult they're for the kid within um and George Lucas knew this and he knew what what kids are interested in what kids like so and he really wrote to that and that his that was his strength um writing to those sort of things so he knew how much kids like um trade federations uh peace treaties you know embargoes on trade senate meetings um chancellors you know chancellors discussing things uh and and things like that. So, and he really wrote to that. And you know, you start. You have a character who's like an old chancellor, you've got old grey-haired chancellor type, and kids, kids' ears prick up straight away. <clears throat> you know, when you move away from the space politics, 
and the old chancellors, that's when the kids' eyes glaze over and they're thinking, come on, get back, get back to it, get back to the chase. You know, get back to the, uh, the embargoes on the trade and whether, uh, you know, whether this, this peace treaty is going to get signed and all stuff like that. <clears throat> um, and then the Force Awakens didn't have anything like that. It was like a sort of, it's like a sort of adventure film or something where they go on this adventure and it's all exciting and you know you can imagine that getting old quite quick but you know apparently they they know what they're doing and the last jedi sort of carries on in that kind of vein um yeah and obviously this is a spoiler free review so i'm not talking any spoilers but um yeah the story carries on straight from where the force awakens ended carries on um you know luke um, oh, that's the bloke's name, Harry Biker, Luke. Um, <clears throat> he he and Ray sort of, um, you know, uh, develop a kind of, uh, a kind of, um, you know, relationship. Not a, not a. They don't become lovers. Uh, um, maybe in the next one, they might. But um, <clears throat> they they get on. You know, it's kind of a. Uh, a father, more father-daughter thing going on, uh, 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 and and you know a passing of the of the baton, which it would have worked better if Luke was a character from the original trilogy, to be honest, because then it'd be like a more meaningful thing. But yeah, you know, it's fine. You know, they keep adding these new characters, and it's you know. Uh, it would be nice to see more characters from the original trilogy turn up, like, you know, would it really hurt to have a cameo for Jar Jar Binks? Just for a minute, you know. I mean, even if it doesn't make sense with the timeline, you know, they can, you know, it's sci-fi, anything, anything can happen. Even if it was just like, I mean, Jar Jar's probably dead by now, but even if it's just his, his corpse propped up and stuffed and... You know, even if he's got a look of pain on his face, like he died in quite a painful way, that would be, f that even that would be fine. Um, um, but you know, there's some um, cool, cool things. Last Jedi again. I, uh, I'm, I'm not, don't want to mention anything that could be spoilery, but there's like, there's these things called porks. They're like the new, the new kids in town, the new guys. They're like, they're sort of like something. Uh, you'd see in the Argos catalogue. Um, you probably will see them in the Argos catalogue uh, soon. Um, like a furry little, furry little thing. Um, um, let me just check my notes that I made. Well, that's about it, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's got some good bits in it. It's got some bits that aren't so good. Um, it's got uh, it's got this sort of middle bit, um, and and there's this thing happens quite near the end that's good. Um, I won't tell you what. Uh, I'm just trying to remember it now. Uh, I did shut my eyes at one point. Uh, I watched the the midnight premiere. And I was quite tired, so at one point, you know, I did shut my eyes, and then I did miss about probably about. Um, 40, 45 minutes in the middle, so, but I got, I got the gist of it, and it's good, worth seeing, so, yeah, The Last Jedi, check it out, and thanks for watching, guys, bye.